This is an ordinary traditional faceting machine. And this is an automatic faceting machine. I've been working on this machine on and off now for well over a year. And before I show you how it works and why it was so complicated to build, first I'm going to show you a little bit about how our traditional faceting machine works so we have a frame of reference. These machines are very, very complicated and they have to be very precise. And I'll show you why. This machine has six different axes of travel, if you count the arbor itself, which I would consider counting because when you're thinking about machines, you're thinking about everything which interacts with the gemstone. So first we have the spinning axis of the cutting bit, which in this case is a large flat surface. Next, we have a horizontal movement axis here. We have a vertical travel axis here. That's three so far. We have this, which pivots back and forth, allowing you to swipe the gemstone across the surface. That's four. We have a, a protractor axis right here, allowing you to adjust the angle. That's five. And lastly, the index angle here, which allows you to rotate the gemstone to the specified angle. If any of these things are not accurate or not dialed in, you're going to get pretty poor results, which is why what I'm about to show you it took me a long time to make. The core concept of this machine is pretty similar to a traditional faceting machine. We have different stepper motors here that control different axes of movement. I can control them manually by holding on to the shaft when the machine's not turned on to demonstrate here. There's one stepper motor here. This controls the horizontal movement here using this screw shaft. There's another stepper motor in here. It controls the vertical movement here, or the y-axis. You'll notice that this entire platform here is all suspended from the x-axis here. So if the x-axis moves, all of the other components move along with it, including the y-axis. Working our way down there, we have another protractor motor here. This stepper motor, which I call the protractor motor, controls the angle of the stone as it's going to interact with the cutting plate here. The last stepper motor, which you can't see, is hidden inside of this box right here. And it's going to control the index angle of the gemstone, rotating it around to cut the different facets. And finally, we have our arbor. So the main difference between this machine and a traditional is that I have five different axes here, if you count the arbor, versus a traditional would have six. I've replaced the side swinging motion with the idea that this stone will go backwards and forwards across the plate. And by having the gemstone move backwards and forwards across the plate, I've eliminated the side swinging axis here. So that does simplify the machine a little bit. It also means that I can control where on the lap the stone is hitting. So I can use specialty laps like a bullseye lap, which allows the stone to stay in a certain area on the lap and use the lap to its full potential. But one of the difficulties when you're cutting a gemstone is that as you cut the gemstone, the arm continues to swing down. This means the angle changes. So one of the fundamental principles behind the design that I created was I wanted to lock the protractor axis at a certain angle and then have the y-axis simply lower the stone down onto the lap. Hypothetically, as long as I had the resolution that I needed in the y-axis stepper motors, I would be able to achieve a pretty high resolution on the stone. But the basics for running this machine are pretty simple. First, I switch on the machine on the power. Once the power comes on, the screen will light up and a pre-programmed message will display on the screen. In this case, it tells me it's ready to draw. Press 1 to start. And one of the most important things about this machine is that because it runs on Arduino, as soon as it receives power, it's going to want to run whatever program was already installed on it. So I had to put some sort of delay which allowed the user to tell the machine when to start. In this case, I put up a program that's going to do something really simple. It's just going to run this stepper motor 
one revolution forward and one revolution backwards. And then it will run the Y motor, one revolution forward and one revolution backward. On this machine, you have 200 steps per resolution and a one full revolution on these particular screws is five millimeters. So we're gonna see this motor travel five millimeters forward and five millimeters backward. And then this whole platform will travel five millimeters down, five millimeters up. So here it goes. I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see. Once it gets to the end, it cycles a tone and asks me if I want to do it again. If I press the one button again, it'll do it again. It repeats the same program. All right, so the idea here is pretty simple, right? You have different stepper motors. You can use them to control the axis and make the, the stone move around in different directions. Um, and if you're running the calculations here, you've probably already figured out that if you have 200 steps per revolution on these screw axis right here, uh, that means that you're for every one step of travel, if you make the stepper motor move one step, then you're going to make the stone move 0.025 millimeters. So that's pretty good. But is it enough for fasting? Well, one of the challenges here with this is that the protractor angle here, that's 200 steps per revolution. So that works out to, I think it's about 1.6 degrees of resolution here in, in the angle. So you are limited there. Also an index your motor, uh, this essentially means that you have a 200 step index. So you're limited to um, degrees which are divisible uh, into 200. So that would be one, two, uh, four, five, 10, 20, 40, 50, and 100. Uh, and those are, are the different <laughs> um, angles of symmetry that you can use for your stone here. So you're, you wouldn't really be able to do a, a perfect uh, trillion, for example, uh, but you could do a, a really well cut uh, pentagon stone, uh, but not a hexagon. So there's, there's definitely some limitations here. And I, I'm sure the question that you're all wondering is, is does this actually work? Well, I'm going to get into that in the next video here. Uh, but for this one, what I really wanted to show is that this is a machine I'm working on and describe a little bit about why I ultimately decided to make this. And initially, when I wanted to make this, this machine here, I really wanted to have a machine that I could design and bring to market, something that one might be able to sell. Uh, but ultimately, after working on this machine, what I really decided was uh, I wanted to make something that I could share. And so that's what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm putting this out here so that other people can, can learn about this machine, maybe make their own. And it's really become more of a hobby for me, a uh, way to explore uh, programming, and fasting and, and creating something with my hand. It's been a lot of fun to build this. As you can see, I'm using mostly off the shelf parts that you can order online. And there are probably hundreds of different ways you can configure this. So if you're curious about making your own, you can feel free to get in touch with me. I posted a few links in the description about some of the key parts I've used. Um, but there's also a lot of parts that I've also 3D printed for this particular build and those would be specific to my, my build. So uh, go ahead and let me know what you think in the comments. I'm sure a lot of you faceters are thinking, oh, this will never take the, the place of a hand faster. And they are absolutely right. Uh, fasting is one of those disciplines right now where a hand cut gemstone is still miles better than any commercially cut or machine cut gem. And there are industrial grade gem cutters out there that will cut uh, 50 or even 100 gemstones simultaneously, uh, but they're made much differently than this machine. Uh, this is one I created just uh, uh, to see if I could. And so, uh, like I said, I'm gonna keep on posting a few videos about this as I progress. I already have a few upgrades in mind, things I'm gonna change about it. So if you wanna see how this progresses, and if you wanna see uh, the inside of the machine, what's under the hood, 
I'll be doing that in future videos, so be sure to subscribe and you'll get to uh, see those videos when they come out. And thanks for watching.